if I could redo my life, would I be an ice cream man? I would have started earlier. Ice cream has the most simple ingredients, but is the most profound food. It is a treat that accompanies us during those small moments in life. Meet Stu and Carolyn Felchu. They own Snowflake Ice Cream Shop on Main Street in Riverhead. We're still doing ice cream the way it was done in 1950. The shop is Riverhead's museum, where customers visit often, taking home memories with a side of hot fudge. Really, this is Riverhead's ice cream shop. You know, we're selling what Riverhead has asked for. Ice cream is something you look forward to the entire meal. That special treat at the end. Cookies and cream and what else? I forgot already. All right, vanilla fun. Okay. It's something that Stu used to work for as payment as a child. When I was in elementary school, I worked for the Good Humor Man. I made one ice cream a day, and at the end of the season, he would take me to a Yankee game. And I thought that was a great deal. I did that for three years. You know, you just don't change ice cream as ice cream, and it, it kind of goes through everyone's history. Fast forward to today, and now he gives that same childhood joy to others. What I really like is I like seeing someone when we, they get a, one of our cups of ice cream with the lid on it, and they pull the lid off and lick the lid. A lot of kids, you hand them an ice cream, they're all excited. Adults are also. Okay, well, thanks. You're quite welcome. Thank you, Marilyn. Stu and I met in the Queens College Jazz Band. I was singing and he was playing the bass. And our first interaction wasn't so great. And we're on the band bus and he sits next to me and he turned to me and he says, how about a quickie? I fell in love with him like right away and here we are, we're still here. Usually at work we're too busy to interact so we, we may have to go, to go in the back and make out a little bit. Stu and Carolyn take pride in what they do. It seems to have been etched in their DNA. For Stu, it was a calling since his childhood. When I grew up in the 1950s, Everybody had a, a bar in their basement of their house. When I was a little kid, I always had this thing that I said, someday if I have a house and a basement, I'm gonna make a little ice cream parlor in my basement. Stu never got the ice cream bar in his basement. Instead, he and Carolyn found themselves working many different jobs, eventually ending up living in the city and working on Wall Street. Stu and I work really well together. And he likes to be the boss, and I like to be the helper. This was the very first business that Stu and I ever had. We always wanted to be in business. It was the Enchanted Forest. Then we were in the striping business. <laughs> and we painted lines in the road. We had a band called Battery Park when we played uh, bars. <laughs> and we called ourselves Tiffany when we played uh, weddings and catered parties. Is that all true? No. Yes, it is, you liar. Yes. <laughs> That's Stu, right there. Skinny bass player. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Can I have uh, vanilla soft with chocolate sprinkles? Okay. All of my relatives were like, you're leaving Wall Street to do what? When I talked about all different things I was looking at, except for ice cream. Our, our, our jobs were high stress. And we were ready. We, we were just ready to have a new adventure. So when we found Snowflake, it was a really great match for us. In 1988, while Stu and Carolyn were looking for a new adventure, the Knitzes were ready to retire and looking for someone to carry on the important work of an ice cream store. Traditionally, this is a real mom and pop shop. And in the ice cream business, usually the men were doing the hot ice cream, 
The women are doing the soft ice creams. It's a lot more work. It takes a lot more talent. So Carolyn is going to be making different novelties out of soft ice cream. Do you see how it's all in there uh, within the perimeter of the cookie? Okay. That's your challenge. That does seem like a challenge here. Their newest adventure seemed to be a difficult one, and not the fun that was assumed for having an ice cream store. The first year, it was because we didn't know what we were doing. We made jokes about, oh, how bad could it be? You run out of fudge. You know, you're not having nightmares over that. But not really. <laughs> if you run out of fudge, it's a, uh, it's a big deal. working 90 hours a week. But after our first year, I said to him, I can't do this another year, you know? If you want to do it, you're on your own. Enjoy it. But we ended up keeping the store. <laughs> we ended up keeping it, and I'm glad we did, and he's glad we did. It was the one place we held a job down. <laughs> Then, a new adventure comes along, when Carolyn finds out she's pregnant. Get in here, get in here, get in here. I mean, between all of us, we have 30 years of experience in this story. Okay, it's great, great. You guys, guys, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. uh, Since we were musicians, that's Max. He didn't stand a chance. He had to be involved in music. But he loved his ice cream. <laughs> when my dad first got the store, he spent about six years working on developing a recipe for Italian ices that could be made in the same equipment and held at the same temperature as ice cream. Max grew up in the store, learning how to make ice cream the old-fashioned way. And we're going to do something like this. We're going to layer a little bit of cookies and then more ice cream. But with all of my flavors, I tend to make it so if you were to close your eyes and try the ice cream, uh -huh. you have no doubt what flavor it is. You can identify it. That makes it. sense. We make it fresh every day. We're doing it the old-fashioned way. Sunny smiles, that's just our style. Snowflake makes you feel good. Snowflake's got that taste you can't forget. Stu and Carolyn soon realized the store is not about ice cream. The store was part of a much larger story. I think our first order of business when we bought this store was to kind of sneak into the community and not have anybody know that the store was changing hands. One day a woman came in and she got an ice cream. She goes, all right, it's as good as the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that was, they would come in just to test us. Snowflake has over 100 flavors. Most have been suggested by the community. Stu makes it his mission to create flavors that represent the people who are his neighbors. You know, this is really what Riverhead eats. And uh, a lot of what you're eating came from the community, too. How are you? How are you? Thank you. Good. How's everything? Okay. Come on in. Uh, the boys want to make... What flavor are they making? Cake. I'm not sure. Max just said maybe strawberry. Ooh. Strawberry crumb cake. When did you meet Stu? I came in here to buy ice cream one day and asked them if they would be interested in putting crumb cake inside the ice cream. And then they heard of Herbie's crumb cake and they're like, yeah, let's try it. And that's how it worked. We like all the flavors, but my favorite is the coconut. You like? I like the butter pecan, which is very good. The Plenty of nuts. You ain't getting anything? anything? I have a cold, that's like... Oh, okay. Ice cream will take it away. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> it's got so many different components. It's got brownies, it's got caramel, it's got fudge. This is our go-to place after we score goals in hockey. We score as many times as we possibly can, just so we can get ice cream here. We see a lot of celebrations, you know. Celebrate graduations, concerts, baseball games, you know, whatever's going on in town, people will end their day here. Food that you share during your first date, first game or just an ending to a perfect weekend. It's something not many people get to sell, but Stu and Carolyn do. 
and that's why they love this business. It's a town where people have grown up here, uh, and they're still here. I've been coming to uh, Snowflake since about 1987, when I used to work in the county buildings. Like two, three, four years maybe. About 35 years. We've been coming here for years and years. I don't even know how long, probably when they opened up. We just come here to enjoy the summer, eat ice cream. Yep. It reminds us of Puerto Rico, right? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm glad that people can come in here and feel like not much has changed. And, and they know what they're going to get, and they get it. That's the pleasure of a place to eat ice cream and the dream that Max hopes to continue when he takes over the business. Max is a really talented musician, but ultimately he made the decision. You know, when I started talking a couple years ago that I don't think I can be on my feet the way I had been, and I don't, you know, I'm getting ready. To, I want to see the world before I can no longer do that. He came to the conclusion that he wanted to take over okay. the store. I figured we'd do vanilla and cookie dough. Okay. Now, and then we'll end with the Girl Scout cookies and cream. Okay, good. That works for us because then we can transition slowly we can, and we can be here as a support to him and he can support us in moving on to our next adventure. Four o'clock and the sun's pretty high still. Yep. Where do you want to cross? Where's a good place to cross? Right over here. Hold up. What? <laughs> oh, I bet you that's one's going to be flat. <laughs> Come down here regularly? We used to when Max was younger. When I had more time. Yeah. Well, we needed a break from the store because we were in the store all the time. Well, you know, my next, you know, adventure. I wanted to. I want to be a little old lady in Italy, <laughs> making pasta. That's what I want to be doing. <laughs> I don't think I have any fears. You should ask Stu that question. Because <laughs> he thinks the world won't go survive without him. Um, that's a sound bite you're probably going to use, right? Um, <laughs> One time uh, when we first opened the store, and we're in the supermarket, and we see a, a couple, this couple that uh, they were regular customers, and they put a brand of ice cream into their shopping cart. And Stu started talking about why that brand of ice cream wasn't any good and blah, blah, blah. And they put it back <laughs> on the shelf. I was really embarrassed. What do I want people to take away when they come to Snowflake and they meet me? Just that he tried his best. And what I'll say about myself is no fun is no fun. So go out and, you know, try and have fun with whatever you're doing and try and do Thank it as well as you can. I wanted to show you our bulletin board. This is, I dug this up out of the archives. You can see that uh, the people are wearing the vintage shirt. We used to sell these shirts and tell them that we wanted to put them on the bulletin board if they, if they traveled in, uh, so they did. This guy did it while he was scuba diving. <laughs> One thing that I would like people to know, if they didn't already know it, is that I really appreciated <laughs> them for being part of my adventure. I hope I was part of their adventure, and we made some memories together. I'm really into making memories. <laughs> that's, that's in the end, I think that's all we end up having, right?